Okay, um, let's do a quick review of where we were. Namely, first of all, we have binary tree versus binary search tree. Does anybody remember what the difference is between those? I can guarantee that some people that, oh, this is the two names for the same thing. No, they're not the same at all. Okay, so here's a binary tree and there's a binary search tree. What's the big difference that you can see in them? But yeah, I know the letters are different in there, but yeah. That is correct. The left side has everything less than the root and the right side has everything greater than the root. So by all binary search trees are binary trees, but not the other way around. So a binary tree and on both of them, you have at most two children. And the binary search, and that property, by the way, that's, we're going to be depending on it to make things work. And we can also use that to check to see that when we manipulate the tree, that it's still correct. We want to make sure that the binary search tree property, smaller to the left, larger to the right, is always still there. Because if that ever gets screwed up, we don't have a binary search tree anymore. Okay. And there we had this before. And we talked about inserting the node. Um, this was oops, excuse me, for a non-empty tree. Um, so starting at the root node, you search, compare the new key to the current node. Uh, let's say I wanted to put in a 14 in here. 14 is less than 17, bigger than 5, bigger than 11, less than 16. So the 14 would go down in here. And when there's no more left or right child to search, that's where you need to put the new node. And this is where the 15 came from. Um, yes, this would be a, this would be a really good um, time to talk about this. I can find it here. Yeah. This is a pseudocode for inserting into a tree. Um, you might want to look at this and know about it because something on the test will, on the final exam, will definitely ask you about this. So if there's nothing in the tree already, then the root becomes a new node. That's, that's the easiest case. Yeah. Otherwise, we have to check, well, the tree and root isn't null, so is the key less than the one in the root of the tree? And if there's no left child, then that's where it belongs. Otherwise, we have to find out where it belongs in the left child. And then the symmetric one is if the key is bigger than the root of the tree, uh, there should be a C there. If there's no right child, then that's where it belongs. Otherwise, we have to figure out where it belongs inside of the right subtree. And if the key is not less or greater than the root of the tree, then it must already be in the tree and we want to change the value. And that will avoid having duplicates. Uh, the, book, the book algorithm does not handle duplicates nicely, but this pseudocode will do it. So be aware that this is, this is going to be important on the test. Now, the next thing we were going to talk about was iterating through a uh, binary search tree. And we'd like to be able to use a for loop, an enhanced for loop to go through all the items in alphabetical order or in ascending order. Let's call it ascending because they might not be words. They might be numbers. And to iterate through something, we have to find a place to start. So we need to be able to figure out where is the smallest element. Then to get to the next item, we have to figure out, well, where's the next element from the smallest? And then when we get to there, what's the next element after that? So those are the two things we need to be able to do to iterate through a binary search tree. And let's look here at the binary search tree.java. And let's look at how we're going to do that. We're going to have, first of all, finding the minimum value. We could do it recursively. But in this case, a while loop is just as good, and it's a much more direct way of saying it. So I'm going to take my tree node, and that's going to become my current node. As long as there is something to the left, I have to keep going to the left. 
again, the binary search tree property tells me if I go as leftwards as far as I can possibly go, that must be the smallest child there is. There can't be anything smaller than that. Otherwise, it would have something to its left. Um, fact, let's go back here for a couple of minutes. Yeah. So I want to find the smallest one in this tree. I go to the left, go to the left again. There's my minimum value. Guaranteed, there can't be anything smaller. Otherwise, the one would be down here, wouldn't it? And I can't go to the right because that would be bigger than the minimum value. So the binary search tree property makes this while loop work. Now, finding the next node. Okay. So we're going to start off by setting the successor to null. So let's say I want the um, successor to five. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's interesting. I should not I should not have done this. Yes, that's right. This is what I want. Yeah. Since there's a right child, there must be something after five, and it must be in somewhere in this tree. Turns out it has to be the seven. Yeah. So I'm going to find the minimum child that's in this right-hand tree. There's the smallest number that's bigger than five must be the one that comes after five. And again, I know how to find the minimum in this subtree. Keep going to the left until I can't go left any further. There's my minimum. So that's one of the simpler cases. If there's no, if you have a right child, then find the smallest node in the subtree. And that's guaranteed to be the one that comes after seven, after five. What if there is no right child? Like on two, we have to ask ourselves, is this the left child? The answer is yes, this is a left child, which means that the parent is the one that comes right afterwards. Again, binary search tree. Since there's nothing to the right, we can't go to the right. There's nothing larger there. And because it's a left child, we know that it is smaller than the parent. So the parent must be the one right above it, or the, excuse me, the successor must be the one right above it. So those are the two fairly direct cases. Now comes the third case where things get really ugly. And that is, what if I want to find the successor to 16? And, and, and it is a right child, okay? But it is not a left child. It's a right child. So that means I can't just go upwards here. That's not going to save me because that's not going to be the next one in order. So here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to, it's got to be somewhere else in the tree. It's got to be above me in the tree. But I never want to come back and hit this guy again. If I ever come back to this node, I've got myself an infinite loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily detach it. And I, I'm keeping track of this here. So this node is 16. The parent is 11, and I still don't know who my next node is going to be. I'm going to set the right child to null. So I'm going to temporarily take this guy out of the tree so I guarantee I can never return to it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to my parent and find the successor for 11. Who comes after 11? So again, this is a recursive way of doing things. Now, this 11 is a right child of a right child, which means I have to go through this whole business again. I have to detach the 11 because I never want to return to it. And then I'm going to find the successor of five. Now, it turns out that five happens to be a left child. Okay, that's great. Oop. Yep, back there. And so that means the successor is 17. Remember, it's a left child, and therefore its parent is the successor of 15. So now I've found the thing that comes after 16. It's 17. Now I can start climbing back down my recursion. Since I found the successor, which is 17, and I'm also going to reestablish this link so that the tree restores to where it used to be. That finishes that, and I can return the 17 to this level. 
And then the parent dot right child becomes this, so I can now reestablish the link that I had to take out. And there's my oops, and there's my successor node, seventeen. Yeah, so that's the hardest possible case. Is if you have something that is a right child, that is not also a left child. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. A left child is not a left child either. And again, you have to unlink things so that you don't travel right back down to them when you call find successor. That's why this, this is the unlinked stage here. And this relinks it. And everything will get linked back properly because remember, recursion remembers what everything was. It has keeps track of all your variables. You may want to go through this by hand, draw it by hand, and go through this step by step to see that this actually does work. And, well, that's nice. Now I have the um, minimum find minimum, and I have my find successor. That means that in here, I can create an iterator. And my iterator... I'm going to keep track of which is the current node that has to get returned. Yeah. So if there's no left child, then the root has to be the smallest one. I'm just going to start at the smallest one. If there is some left child, then I have to find the minimum child. The next thing that iterators have to do is they have a has next method asking, is there anything left in the tree? And I can return iterator node not equal to null. There's still n nothing. If I don't, if, if if I have a candidate to return, I'll I, I'll return it. And here's how I go to the next one. I say set my results to null. If I'm not at the end of the line already, then I'm going to set my result to the current node and then set my current node, the one that's going to be the next in line to the successor. And then I return the one that I'm currently at. Now the question is, how do I use these? So let's look at this example here. Here I have a binary search tree that has strings for both keys and values. And I'm going to um, insert these. And let's print this out. In fact, let's do this just so we can see what's going on here. Do this in stages. And again, this is the list of lists um, representation. So when I um, put these in here, so we can see everything. France was the first one, so that becomes the root. Albania is to the left of France and everything else is greater than France. On the right hand of France, Japan is the root of that tree, and Germany is to the left, and all of these are to the right. Do you need me to draw this on the board to show you what it looks like? Okay, yeah, I sort of thought so. Yeah. So, hmm, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Okay, first of all, I'm going to turn this on. Stop sharing. Okay. This is going to be interesting. First thing I have to do is find the... So the first thing that it comes in is France. Yeah, I'm just going to use the first, first letter because that will make things a little bit easier. And the next one was Japan. Japan is greater than France, so that goes there. Germany is bigger than France, but less than Japan, so Germany goes there. Now I have Albania. Albania is less than France, so Albania goes to the left. Then Madagascar. Madagascar is larger than F, larger than Japan, therefore Madagascar goes there. Um, then Kenya. Bigger than France, bigger than Japan, so it has to go here, but it's less than Madagascar, so Kenya goes there. Then I have South Korea, 
which goes there because it's bigger than all of those. And finally, Zimbabwe, which goes there because that's what this tree will look like. And if I were to iterate through it, I should get um, Albania, France, Germany, because that's the successor node. I just had to drop down here and find the minimum. And this is a left child of a left child, which means Japan is the next one after that. Um, then here I find the left minimum of the, of the right child, which is Kenya, have to move up to the parent to get Madagascar. And then um, I'm not sure if this is one of the ones where I have to use recursion or not, but then I get South Korea and Zimbabwe by going to the right. So that's what that looked like. Um, let's go back and take a look at it. So now let's go and use an enhanced for loop. Oh, by the way, this is something that for their assignments. It's, uh, somebody asked this earlier. What if I want to get a tree node? Remember I said the tree node is inside of binary search tree? If I were to just say, I want a tree node to get the roots right child, that's not going to compile. It's going to say, oh, well, first thing I got to do is get rid of this closing comment. <laughs> there we go. Much better. And so it's going to say, no, I can't find the symbol. So when you want to get a tree node, you have to say, search tree dot tree node. So this is the tree node type that is inside the binary search tree class. And then it compiles fun. And then here I can say the root of the tree's right child also has a right child. And so I get the tree's root has the right child and I assign it to T. And then I want to see if that also has a right child. And looking up here, the right child should definitely have a right child. And then I'm also going to do this. I'm going to use the iterator to print out all of the keys and values with an enhanced for loop. I'm going to go through each node in the tree and then print out its key and value. And there it is. And you'll notice that the countries are in alphabetical order. So now I know that my iterator works. And here I'm using an iterator directly. If I ever need to go in through an iterator where I have to do some extra processing and not just printing them out, and a regular old for loop wouldn't work, or let's say I need to break out of it early for some reason, I don't know why I would want this, but I would set up an iterator and explicitly create one. And then as long as my iterator has a next element, I'll grab that next element and I'll print out its key and value. And I'm not going to expect you to know about how to create these iterators or how to use them particularly. But you should know that they it can be done in case you ever come up with some data type and you need to be able to iterate over it. You need to create an iterator. Yes, it's doable, but it won't show up on the test. The enhanced for loop is a lot easier than doing the iterator yourself, but we still get exactly the same results. Yeah. Okay, well, that's all very nice. Okay, so we have now taken care of inserting things into a tree and iterating through them. Now we have one more problem that's removing stuff from a binary search tree. And, and the big operation that's going to happen to happen is we're going to have to be able to get rid of, unlink something from the tree. So once we have a node, we need to splice it out. So there's a lot of different cases here, and I'm just going to go through these, and you can see that, okay. The, the, okay, back off here a second. I need to um, do a mea culpa here. 
What you see in the book has a method called adjust parent that goes and does things to the parent node to link around stuff. Turns out that's absolutely not necessary. I thought, man, man this, du this duplicate code, something's weird here. And the version that I'm going to upload with the example files does not have that anymore. Okay, so the book does not match what is going to be uploaded today. And it also does not match what you're going to be using on the assignment. So the uh, one on the assignment happens to have the adjust parent method in there. Fine, don't worry about it. It works. All the code in binary search tree works. It's just more complicated than it needs to be. And I need to update the book at some point, but doing it right before the end of the semester is probably a really bad idea. So be, so be aware that what I'm explaining to you right now, this makes things a lot easier. Yeah. So if we have a leaf node, this is the easiest case. If it's a, left, a leaf node that is the left child, to get rid of it and splice it out so that we can put something else in its place, um, we take the parent. If it's a left child, we get rid of the link to it and it's out of the tree. Uh, if we were to, let's say, we wanted to get rid of eight, okay? It's a, eight is a leaf node. Okay? Um, is it a left child? No, it's a right child. So how do we take eight out of the tree? Answer, we set the right child to null. And there it is, it's gone. There's no way to access it anymore. The garbage collector will come and take care of it. So that's our simplest case is getting rid of a leaf node. Now, let's say we don't have a leaf node, and this time we have we want to get rid of a node that has a left child. Question, is this a left child itself? Yes, it is. That means what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take, to get the nine out of there, we're going to have to take 11, and its left child will have to go down to the seven, which is the left child of here. So this will take the 11 and route it down to seven. Um, if we were going to get rid of the 16 instead, uh, no, no, no I, I don't know where I can get rid of it. I need something that has a left child and get, let's just go with this example here. So since I've routed around the nine. Um, oh, there's one, seven. So here I have something that is a left child, and I want to get rid of this. So it, it's a left child. Oh, this is interesting. Hold on. Yeah, it is. Yes. Then what we're going to have to do, okay. Yeah, this. I'm sorry. Let me go back and back and explain this a little bit better. We have a non-leaf node. That means we're going to have to do something in this block of code. If we're removing something that has a left child, and it also is a left child, then we can route around it. Now, this it's not, so this is not a leaf node. Its left child is null. There's nothing to the left of it. So we can't route the nine around it. That would just be weird. Okay. But it is a left child. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the nine and the eight is going to take its place on the left. And this one here, this line here, and this line here are the symmetrical cases if we had a mirror image of it. All of these things are ways that we can take out a node and we route the parent links around it so that everybody is still in the correct position. 
And again, this is important. When we got rid of the nine, we have to make sure we have to make sure that the eight is on the now. Unfortunately, visually, it is in the wrong place. So here's what I'm going to do. Let me let me make the visual work out right here. And Great, I'm gonna have to. So that's what's gonna to have to happen. So the nine is gonna route out down to the eight. So that's the splice out method. And it's very important because that's how we are going to be able to remove a node from a tree. And let's look at the code here for removing a key. Search tree Java. So here we have a remove node. This is the one if we have a leaf node. Um, this looks like the same code that we went through before. Yeah. If we have one or more children, then we have to find the next item in the in the we have to find the next item that's in the list. We have to splice it out, get rid of it. And then the current node will become the successor's key and value. So we replace, boy, I, I'm not explaining this well at all, or am I? I think I need to show this on the board. Got it. Okay, let me write down what, what's actually happening here. So here's here's how we're going to remove a node. To remove a node, okay, we find the successor of the current node. Okay. We splice the successor out of the tree and move its contents into the current node. So that's how we're going to do the removing. We have to unlink the successor node and then put whatever was in the successor node into where we are right now. And then everything will still be binary search tree compatible. So let's say here that I wanted to remove Japan from the tree. I'm going to take Japan. The successor of Japan is Kenya, correct? I'm going to splice it out and put Kenya in there. And everything still works out great. Everything to the left is still less. Everything to the right is still greater. Let's put Japan Kenya back in there. Um, give me something else that you'd like to see removed. Which one do you like, like me to remove? Uh, let's see that this, this works the way I think it does. Okay, so we're going to get rid of S here. Yeah, the successor is Z, which means we're going to splice out Z and put Z where S used to be. So that was a, a fairly simple case. Let's try getting rid of. Ooh, what about France? That's an interesting one, right? Okay, the successor of France is Germany. We splice out Germany. And its contents go there. And yep, everything is still binary tree compatible. And it's the splicing out. It's just readjusting everything so that we get rid of the node and we put it back where it really belongs. And so that's, that's the removal process. Um, what if I were to get rid of 
Oh, I already did get rid of Japan. This is not a terrific example here, probably because I can't. Uh, I'm trying to figure out one of the one that would be interesting. What if I'm going to get rid of Madagascar? No, that's the same thing that we had before. Okay, so unfortunately, I can't. I can't see see a complicated case here. Um, let's go back to these slides here, though. Um, and let's just go to this tree here. Let's say I wanted to get rid of the. Um, let's go back. Here. So if I want to get rid of nine. Do you want to share your? Uh, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Thank you. Okay, can you see it okay? It's good. Yeah, yeah. So if I wanted to get, um, let's see. I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of what I want to do here, and um, I'm, I'm 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 getting confused between what I'm seeing in the code and what I'm seeing with what I just wrote here. Yeah. So if I wanted to take nine out of the tree, what would have to happen is um, the successor is eleven, correct? I'd splice out the nine. Oh no, I'd be I'd be done because of the left tree property. Never mind. <laughs> That's a lousy example. Um, Oh, this would be the one that I would, would, be, would be the tricky one. If I think if I wanted to remove five, that one might be the one that would be sort of tricky to get rid of. The seven would be this. Yeah, let, let, I'm going to draw this on the board. Let me put the, keep this up here and let me draw it on the board and, and see if I can show this, throw this one in action. Okay. Because th this one is slightly non-trivial. Let's see. They're, they're, they're initially fair lot. Eleven. Yeah. For those of you who can't see what I'm doing, I'm actually drawing this. Let me start start the video. You might be able to see it in the in a window there. Problem is, if I stop sharing, I can't see the diagram here. Oops. There we go. Okay. So, can you see the whole tree there? Yes. Okay. So I want to get rid of five. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take find the successor node. The successor node is seven. I need to splice out the seven and get rid of it from where it currently is. Since the way this is going to work, this six uh, is going to move over to here, and then I take the seven and put it where it would have where the five used to be. And now I still have my properties. Everything is still working exactly right. I have my seven, two is less, everything here. Um, have I done this? But that can, no, that can still happen. You're right, this, this, this six here is not in the right place. Yeah. 
tell you what, I'm going to have to think about this. I'm going to have to look at it a little bit later and see what see what exactly what I did wrong. Okay, there may be more, there may be, this may be trickier than I thought. Let's go back and look at the code real quick here and see what's happening. Oh, that's right. This wasn't a seven. This was an eight. I thought it was a six. <laughs> okay. Guess what? If you draw the diagram wrong, it's wrong. Okay. Let's let's go back and do this. This this is correct if I if I draw the diagram properly. And we had the five here. We had the seven here, and this was an eight. There we go. That's not. It wasn't a six. It was an eight. Now this is going to this this is exactly right. Yeah, if you draw the tree wrong, you get wrong answers. Okay, we're going to get rid of five. The successor of five is seven. We're going to splice out the seven, which means the eight goes down to the left of nine, and the seven goes in there. And now we're good. Um, if at this point I wanted to get rid of the eleven, sixteen is the successor. Splice it out. Put the 16 in there. If I want to get rid of 29, okay, well, that's a leaf node. Just eliminate it. I'm, I'm done. So if you draw a complicated enough tree, you can see that these all are going to eventually work. Now, it would be nice to be able to test this in an actual program. And that is what I have done here, namely a remove test. So here's this same tree that we had before. I'm going to create a binary search tree with countries and capitals. I'm going to show the tree and ask the user for a country name to delete. And if it's in the tree, we'll remove it. Otherwise, we'll show the and then we'll show the resulting tree. And I'm also going to be able to reset it. So in case I want to delete one and then reset it and show it again. So again, I'm going to be uploading this, by the way, so you all you will have this available. So let's say I want to get rid of which one would you like me to get rid of? And that's what's left. So South Korea, Kenya, and Zimbabwe are in the same relative order. There's nothing that I have to get rid of. Let's say I want to get rid of Albania. And again, this is using this current tree. Now Denmark moves to the left of France. Remember, Albania was to the left of France, but Albania's successor is Denmark. So Denmark replaces where Albania was, which is on the left. And if I want to get rid of, let's say, then everybody moves. Kenya is the successor of Japan, and that moves to the position of the tree where Japan used to be. And if I want to start all over, I say reset, and now I've got my original tree back. So you can look at this and you can play with this example and see what's going on. If you just press enter, that ends the program. Okay, so this is, um, that's what you need to know about binary search trees. Again, you, I, you will need to know the pseudocode for inserting. Doing the pseudocode for removing, that's a lot more complicated. Understand it, but I'm not going to ask you to duplicate that. Um, again, I'm going to be uploading all of the um, example files from today. So this is the remove test. This is a search tree example. And this is what you're going to need to know to be able to get to a specific node. You need to know this, a binary search tree dot tree node. Um, you know, this would be a really good time to talk about that is the assignment.
because this is everything you know need to know about the assignment. And I extended it until Thursday instead of Wednesday. Uh, measure trees. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Figure out any sort of key and value pairs that you want to um, store. And I don't care what they are as long as they're G-rated. Anything you like. I'm going to leave that open-ended. And then we're going to have a program called test BST. And it has to describe what the keys and values are. So that I will know what I'm looking at when I actually um, run your program. You're going to implement a method called get height that takes a binary search tree as its parameter and returns the height as an integer. Um, do you think I should give some quick pseudocode on that or not? Professor, do you think I should get some pseudocode real quick or not? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. BST is uh, um, a bad topic. Hmm. Okay, let me stop, stop sharing, um, sharing for a moment and turn on the video again. And to find the height of a tree, okay, first of all, let's take this tree here that has just the letter A in it. What's the height of this tree? One, okay, so if we have a, a, a leaf node, that has a height of one, agreed? Um, in fact, let me erase this whole thing here. Well, yeah, I can't do that with a binary search tree. Let's put What's the height of this tree? Two. It's one. It's one for the root plus the height of the left subtree, isn't it? What's the height of this one? Also two, correct? How about this one? Three. How do you figure that out? Yeah, you keep adding one for every level. And what about this one? Doesn't does this affect it or not? No, because it's shorter. Right? Does this make sense? So really what we're gonna do is now that we know we sort of know what's going on with that, um so it's one with the root plus the maximum of the height of the left and the height of the right subtree. So there's our nice recursive definition. I take one plus, figure out how tall the left subtree is, figure out how tall the right subtree is, and whichever one of those is greater, add one, and there's the height of my entire tree. Oop, I can't do that. And then the other thing we have to do is count leaf nodes. It takes a binary search tree as a parameter and returns the number of leaf nodes in a tree. And honestly, the, by the way, this may not be the optimal way of doing it. I'm going to tell you right now. This, there may be a cleverer and simpler way of doing it, but I don't care. The first way that you think of doing it that works is the right way to do it. If it turns out in practice, when you run your code that it's too slow, then you can work on improving it. I just want something that works first and then I'll improve it, okay? First, make it work, then make it beautiful, then make it fast. So to find the number of leaf nodes, and this is, this is the first thing that came into my head. And it's, again, it's probably not optimal, but I know it's gonna work. Traverse the whole tree in the order you like, and add one every time you hit a leaf node. Okay, 
guaranteed to give you the number of leaf nodes, isn't it? Again, yeah, might not be the best way to do it, but I can tell you that I know I know it's going to work. Uh, and let's just check here. Yes, we can say is leaf. Isn't that nice? And the node has every time you get a node, you can call its is leaf method to tell you whether you got a leaf node or not. That's handy. So that's nice to know. So there's your pseudocode for the parts that you have to, the methods you have to implement. These will not be inside of binary search tree. They're gonna be inside of your code. And then we're gonna ask the user for key and value pairs and insert them into the binary search tree, okay? Open-ended, you may wanna ask for the key and value separately. You may wanna ask for the key and the value separated by a comma, I don't care. Um, but do make the prompt meaningful. So if I say enter keys and values, well, what the heck is that? That could be anything. But enter a state and capital separated by a comma. Aha, now I know what the, as the person who's using the program, now I know what I'm supposed to do. So make your prompts meaningful, please. And then enter them into this, the same order as they were specified by the person at the keyboard. Once the input finishes, then you're going to print the height of the tree, the number of leaf nodes, and the total number of nodes in the tree. Remember that we already have that. There's a size parameter uh, property inside of binary search tree. So report that. Then we're going to repeatedly ask the user for keys and display the corresponding value. If the key's not in the tree, give an appropriate error message, don't crash the program. That would be not very classy. In fact, I had to do something like this in the removal code. Where was that? Remove test. Yeah, I had a try catch. I said, remove it, remove it and print it out. And if I caught an exception, I used the message. And the message would tell you that it's not in the tree. How did that happen? That's because it's in binary search tree dot Java, where I have, um, where is it here? Or I throw a no such element exception and I give the string that, for the key and tell you it's not in the tree. So a lot of this stuff you're getting for free because I'm doing it inside of binary search tree Java. But I just want you to be able to use this. Uh, when people are entering data into the tree, if they enter an invalid key or value, don't crash. So if you're looking for, let's say, a number, um, let's say you're looking for a zip code is the key and the city is the value. If they enter letters instead of a zip code, you don't want to crash the program. You want to say, I'm sorry, the zip code must be a number. And again, give a good input. Okay, Invalid input, is that's a terrible message. Yeah, what's wrong with it? Okay, but. Entering the boiling point of very hot is not numeric or something that tells the person, hey, here's what's wrong, and then they will know how to correct it. Yeah. If you encounter invalid input, you give an error message, but don't enter the data into the tree. And you don't want to stop the program either. You don't want to stop the moment you hit bad data. So let's say, again, I'm asking for zip codes and cities, and they enter a bad zip code, maybe too large of a number or too... Um, or something non-numeric, I'll say, I'm sorry, but you must have a number. And then I'll keep going and ask again. I will not stop the program and I will not crash the program either. And I won't stop the input. I'll keep going doing input until they hit some sentinel value. I might say, enter all zeros for the zip code to finish or just press enter only to finish. I don't know. Again, this is up to you. You can decide what the input format's going to be, you can decide um, what's going to stop the input loop. This is my way of making sure that I don't get a lot of exact duplicate programs. <laughs> and then upload the test bst.java program. You don't, will not have to upload binary search tree.java because I have a copy of it. I'll use my copy of it. And the methods that you use are going to be the same anyway. So that's the assignment. Now, the, what the preview of coming attractions, what are we going to be doing on um, 
Wednesday. Well, take a look at this tree here. And do you notice anything about the left half and the right half on this? In terms of height, what do you notice? Yeah, the left is a lot taller. This is what's called a left heavy subtree. And this is not disastrously bad, okay? But it is possible for you this to get, if, if I had the letters A through G and I was entering them in that order into a binary tree, binary search tree, I'd have A at the top and then everything would be on the right and I'd have nothing on the left, correct? And that means that if I wanted to search for something, I'd have a linear search. I'd be right back with an array. Well, what's the advantage? So when we have something that's out of balance, and this one's a left heavy tree, we will not get our optimum performance. The more out of balance it is, the closer we're going to get to linear performance. And we want to avoid that. We'd like to have log n performance. We'd like to have a tree where the left and right subtrees are the same or height or no more than one, one level above the other. And when we have that, what's called a balanced tree. So we'd like to be able to take a tree like this. And as we are you know, putting things into the tree, we want them to balance out so that we never end up with a left heavy tree or a right heavy tree. And that's what we're going to talk about on Wednesday. And it's something called the AVL algorithm. The um, name is after the people who de developed the algorithm. And it's an algorithm for taking a tree that's out of balance and putting it back into balance. And it's an important algorithm to know about, but that's what we're going to talk about on Wednesday. So right now, we've got binary search trees, but they can get out of control in terms of how heavy they are to the left or how heavy they are to the right. And we're going to find an algorithm on Wednesday that will help us avoid that problem and get better performance. And now you can work on your assignment or whatever it is that you need to work on. Any questions before I um, end this? Yeah. Then I will stop recording.